Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Normally, we don't pay a lot of attention to the giant field of Democratic Party candidates for U.S. President, but there is one fellow in particular who is a shining example of everything wrong with the Catholic Church in the U.S., a man who is a blindingly clear example and incredible embarrassment to the U.S. hierarchy. The man is Pete Buttigieg, the current mayor of South Bend, Indiana. Buttigieg was baptized Catholic and went to South Bend's very well-noted St. Joseph's Catholic High School, even graduating valedictorian at the celebrated school. And he is a shining example of the near-complete collapse of the faith in the U.S. He left St. Joe's and went to Harvard, and it was there he lost his Catholic faith. But the ground for him to lose his faith had been prepared for, essentially guaranteed by his home, his parish, and his school, the three places so many young Catholics lose any semblance of their faith today. Buttigieg's father had studied to be a Jesuit priest before emigrating from Malta to South Bend, where he ended up on the faculty at Notre Dame and an avowed Marxist. His father apparently got the double whammy of having been Jesuit trained after the order had gone completely insane, and then landing at Notre Dame after it had gone completely insane. That was the influence for young Pete at home. In the parish, he was raised in the Church of Nice. No real defense of or teaching of the authentic faith. And at school, same old story. No real catechesis of anything authentic. The entire Catholic establishment, home, school, and parish failed this guy. As the establishment has failed tens of millions of young Catholics just like him for the past 50 years. So, he went to Harvard, discovered he was sexually attracted to other males, had zero in way of spiritual or theological preparation to deal with his issue, as well as the hurricane of secularism he encountered there, and eventually converted to Episcopalianism, where the warped theology he received in his youth, as well as his sexual desire for other men, would be warmly welcomed. And for all those hundreds of bishops who refused to publicly condemn James Martin, Thinking, keeping silent about his personal perversion as well as his perversion of the church's teaching is perfectly fine. Buttigieg publicly states one of his major influences is that sick priest. How do these men think their silence will not be held against them at their judgments? Buttigieg's story is only known because he has some political fame, but, is, but it is hardly a singular story. So, what has the Church of Nice produced? A civilly married homosexual who thinks his immoral life of sodomy is perfectly fine with God, but not being eco-friendly is a sin, and that human life only begins when a person can breathe. He made both those stupid comments recently, the first at the Dems' seven-hour marathon on so-called man-made climate change aired on CNN, the second on the New York radio program The Breakfast Club. Well, if, if you believe that God is watching as poison is being belched into the air of creation and people are being harmed by it. Countries are at risk of vanishing in low-lying areas. Who do you suppose God thinks of that? I bet he thinks it's messed up. At least one way of talking about this is that it's a kind of sin. Now, right now, they hold everybody in line with this one uh, kind of uh, piece of doctrine about abortion, right? which is obviously a tough issue for a lot of people to think through morally. Then again, uh, you know, there's a lot of parts of the Bible that talk about how life begins with breath. And so even that is something that we can interpret differently. It matters little now that Buttigieg has a very low chance of securing the Democratic nomination. That's not the point. First, as the older Dems die off, he is positioning himself to play a prominent role in the future of the party perhaps securing the nomination itself in a couple of cycles from now. So this is just kind of a warm-up run. Secondly, he is the walking, talking poster boy for everything that has gone wrong, a living, breathing example of the ineptitude and duplicity of the U.S. hierarchy, who even to this very day continue to betray the faith, incubating millions of more Catholic youth just like him in rebellion against the truth. His appeal to scripture for support of abortion, which couldn't be more rich, demonstrating a liberal-minded arrogance beyond appalling. 
The same scripture he cites in support of his policy of killing children, which it does not, also condemns his sodomy repeatedly, but that he ignores. Or better said, he appeals to the distortions of James Martin to rationalize his way through the scripture. So what has the hierarchy produced? An active homosexual who cites scripture to call good evil and evil good, who moralizes about the sinfulness of a completely made-up issue, which has been made up for the advancement of an anti-God agenda, yet draped in all kinds of scriptural platitudes, proving, once again, Pete, that even the devil cites scripture for his own purposes. Is there no end to the shame and corresponding depths that the U.S. hierarchy can fall? One closing point, when Pete was not learning the faith in Catholic high school, he was winning the JFK Profiles and Courage essay contest awarded by the John F. Kennedy Library in Boston. Pro-abort and fake Catholic Caroline Kennedy and other members of the pro-abort and fake Catholic Kennedy clan presented the teenage Pete with the award. The Kennedys, likewise, were corrupted by the Jesuits and an errant hierarchy more concerned about climate change and immigration than salvation. As the saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. But hey, good thing we have a reasonable hope all men are saved, Bishop Barron, right? Because in the end, why does it matter if you're in favor of killing children and having sex with the same sex, or if you actually do these activities? We have that reasonable hope, so no one should get upset about any of this. Betrayal of the faith, sodomy, child murder. It's all good, for Pete's sake. God love you. I'm Michael Boris.